Hello there and welcome to the kitchen. And we have food that is nourishing and helpful and good for the cold weather. And I have a special friend here. Marie Hagler is here from Clemson University. And she's all ready to get us through the cold winter. Yes. With some good food that's not that hard to do, right? Oh, yeah, this is super easy, that's, um, super comforting. And I feel like we're going to have a pretty cold winter. So this is going to be a great dish for that. All right. Today, we're going to make a turkey chili cornbread casserole. So we're, it's going to be chili and cornbread all in one dish. So, so one it's like dish a meal wonder. in one. Oh, yes, ma'am. And that's the best kind because you don't have to drape a lot of pots and pans, and it's comforting, and it's delicious. And this is what everybody, this time of year, people, they're looking for something like exactly. this. Exactly. Is it something you could do ahead? Yes, and I'll give you some tips about how you can make this ahead, freeze it, and then oh boy. Okay. whip it out and defrost it and cook it. Okay, so what we're going to start off with is I have a tablespoon of vegetable oil in this okay. pot. All right, there we and, go. And we're, I'm just making chili. So if you have your own chili recipe, you could just make... Whatever kind of chili, we're gonna make sure, or I'm not, I'm gonna have to reduce it down a little bit so it's not so soupy as a normal okay, chili. Okay, so now, yeah, how much you put in there? A tablespoon? A tablespoon of vegetable oil or olive oil or whatever okay. kind of oil. All right. I'm gonna add um, one onion that has been chopped. Okay. Voila. And yeah, if you wanna give me a little stir there, that'd be great. And then one green bell pepper that's been chopped. I'm not gonna do any chopping today. I just went ahead and chopped it up for myself. And actually, that's the only the only part of this recipe that is, you know, it takes time to some, chop. Yeah. But outside of that, and you it's can easy. even buy all this stuff chopped if you just don't but like But you know that. what? It isn't as good as the fresh things that's that true, you chop true. yourself. And it's very satisfying to chop things. I feel like. Um, and then also, I have two garlic cloves that have been finely minced. Okay. And then you could add, if you wanted to just do garlic powder, you could do that as well. You don't have to add fresh garlic, but I like fresh garlic, so we're going to add that. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to saute this until it gets a little softened. Uh, you could add, if you wanted to at this point, you could add some jalapenos. I'm not going to add any heat to this dish because some people don't like heat, but I do like heat. But, so, so it's up to the individual. So this, is yeah, it, like I said, this could be a normal. Hot? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's up to, you know, if you have a special chili recipe that you like, you could use that. Just make sure you kind of cook it down so it's not as soupy. To, um, we're going to be using lean ground turkey, but you could use lean ground beef. You could use venison. You could use full fat beef if you wanted to. Okay. Or pork, chicken, whatever kind of meat you want to use. This is just going to be a little leaner. Trying to make this somewhat healthy as well. And yeah, nutritious. no, that's, that's important. The, it is very important. The somewhat healthy. The somewhat healthy dish. <laughs> um, so that, and then um, we're going to add some beans as well and some just diced tomatoes. Yeah, it's just beginning. To so that, and that's fine because gonna, I'm going to go ahead and um, throw this ground turkey in there and let it start cooking as well because it's all going to start cooking together. So if you're ready, all right, I'm going to throw it in, in there. I'm going to wash my hands after I'm I a good stirrer. handle that. So all you can good break. cooks have to use their hands, you know. That's right. It's a motto of mine. So I'm gonna watch. Well, welcome to our kitchen. I'm Peggy with a special welcome for you today. And we have good recipes, good food, and Rhonda Matthews, who is a good cook. Oh, from thank Clemson you. Clemson University. That's right. I you work got with on Clemson. your Clemson shirt. <laughs> I love that. Indeed. I am I am tiger through good and through today. You. Good for you. <laughs> and you've got Meals that, you know, tasty meals for the family. That's right. Today we're going to take a look at recipes that the vegetables are in season, so uh, you can find them easily in the local markets. And every recipe we'll look at today is extremely flexible. So if you don't like exactly what we do today, everything that we're doing today can be tweaked to tweak oh, to plenty. Okay. I started to say a little, but you can flex these a lot and turn it into something that your family will be oh, very so pleased with. So this is what? Um, so we'll start out with our, uh, we're going to do a noodle, so to speak, and that'll be our spaghetti squash noodles. And then we'll do a meat and vegetable okay. mix so over like the top dinner. of our noodles. Okay. That's right. So we're going right. to make the whole meal. So we're going to start out with spaghetti squash and the name is uh, correct. 
uh, the strands that are inside this squash very much resemble spaghetti. Um, and it is very welcoming to any kind of sauce or any kind of topping or flavoring mm, that you put on okay. it. Um, it's good on its own. It's also good if you top it with anything. When you choose a spaghetti squash, if you've never bought one before, we recommend looking for one that has a unpunctured, perfect rind. And the rind is, uh, it, look for one that is dull yellow uh, and you'll be, uh, you'll get a good one then. Now, they'll, this is a fairly small one, just a little bit bigger than a softball. They'll come out as big yeah. as almost a football. So uh, anywhere in there is the right size, buy one that will feed your family for okay. one meal. So what we're gonna do is we'll take a p very pointed knife and pierce. Okay, she's something else with that knife. Yeah. <laughs> now, the thing about a spaghetti squash, like all the winter squashes is they've got that rind is tough and it is yeah. it does its job to protect the inside you can leave these actually laying on the countertop for many days uh, and they will be perfectly fine and so be careful as you open it up it will take oh. a little bit of elbow grease to get it open okay. so be prepared for that so when we open it up still pale yellow on the inside. You'll want to scrape away where you can see the, the, the seeds. seeds are. So the easiest way I found to do it, you can use any kind of spoon, but if you've got a that's handy... That's like an ice cream. That's scooper. an ice cream yeah. scoop, that's right. And if you'll just bear down in there and work loose those...